everybody, it's Catherine. Welcome to my channel where I like to talk all things beauty and fragrance. This video is for those of you who like to garnish yourself with perfume or fragrance when you go out on special dates with those special people. I have 10 fragrances that I'm going to go over. I'm going to break it into five day date scents or maybe not necessarily day date, but more casual first date type fragrances. And then I'm going to get more into some night, more formal scents. And then we'll finish it off with those fragrances that you might wear on those dates where you want to seem particularly enticing. I'm gonna, most of these fragrances I'm going to discuss today are more feminine or more geared towards the women. There are a few peppered in that can be unisex. There will be a future video for the men, but this one's mainly feminine with a few of the unisex fragrances peppered in. Without further ado, let's get started. So the first one we're gonna discuss is one of my all-time favorite perfumes. It's the first Creed scent that I fell completely in love with, and that is Aqua Fiorentina. Aqua Fiorentina is a 2009 fragrance created by Olivier and Erwin Creed. It's a beautiful, beautiful floral scent. One of the things I love about it isn't even the fragrance itself, but the bottle. I tried to find on the Creed website, it's been sold out for weeks, if not months. This is the beautiful, gorgeous bottle. Along the cap as along the sides, there are some like magenta floral detailing, which is just so beautiful, but I couldn't find a picture of it. You'll have to check that out when you when you have the opportunity. It's a 2009 fragrance. The creation of Aqua Fiorentina was inspired by the art and culture of Renaissance 15th century Florence, Italy. The top notes of Aqua Fiorentina are apple plum, middle notes bergamot, Sicilian bergamot, lemon pear, and rose. Base notes white grapefruit, Virginia cedar, and sandalwood. The first notes that you experience with Aqua Fiorentina are definitely that crisp apple note with the um, kind of the plum to kind of mellow it out. Then you move into the apple mixed with the bergamot, mixed with uh, the pear, and the rose note becomes a bit stronger. I think it's present in the initial notes, but it becomes more prevalent as time passes. And then you've got that dry down of the Virginia cedar and the sandalwood to kind of give it a great base, but the grapefruit to give it a bit of a tangy edge. So all in all, a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, perfect for summer dates, perfect for summer day dates. I think it wears well into the evening as, you know, heat and humidity are gonna make the fragrance expand, so it would be fine for a night night, a night date as well. However, I plug it into the day dates only because of its uh, floral citrus lightness. Cassiopeia is considered a shyper floral fragrance for women and men. Cassiopeia was launched in 2015. The nose behind this fragrance is Paolo Terenzi. The Orza video that I did recently, Orza is also created by Paolo Terenzi, so if you're familiar with my channel, the names might sound familiar to you. Speaking of which, if you're new to my channel, welcome. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so that you can stay up to date with the videos that I post. Also make sure to hit the like button, all of y'all. It really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm. It's kind of my tip for these videos. If you're so inclined, hit that notification bell so that you can be alerted when I first post my videos. Cassiopeia created by uh, Paolo Terenzi. The top notes are passion fruit, cassis, lemon and fern, middle notes carnation, tea rose, lily of the valley, base notes tonka bean, musk, and sandalwood. If you're not already familiar with Tiziana Terenzi, you should be. These fragrances are superb. There is no other way to describe them. They're long lasting, depending on which fragrance it is, is how much of a solage there is, but the longevity is nearly insurmountable. They last, the last, and last and last. You won't really need to reapply. There's very few that I have tried by the line that I that lasted like I'd say an average perfume would last. Most of them an unparamounted uh, longevity. Regardless, Cassiopeia is a beautiful fragrance. It's light, it's floral, it's fruity. I know that it's technically a unisex fragrance. I consider it more on the feminine side, mainly because of those floral notes. The thing with Tiziana Terenzi too, the notes are so beautifully interwoven. You, you can't really discern one note from another for the most part. I can smell like the passion fruit. So another option for you for a beautiful daytime date. I picture like a sundress, sunny walk in the park, sitting outside for al fresco drinks. That's the imagery I have with this fragrance. The next fragrance that we're gonna discuss is also by Tiziana Terenzi and that is Tabit. 
Tabit is a bit stronger of a fragrance than the ones that we've discussed. More fuller bodied, it's more dense. Tabit by Tiziana Terenzi is a floral woody musk fragrance for women and men. Launched in 2016, again, created by Paolo Terenzi. It is part of the Luna Stars collection. Each of their uh, collections have such artistry and uh, creativity behind them. The Luna Stars collection is inspired by the beauty of wonder, like childlike uh, fascination and imagination. So this fragrance truly is another beautiful, beautiful fragrance. It's rich, it's dense, it's but yet not um, super, super heavy, which is why I still put it in those daytime date sense. However, as I said, it is very full bodied, so keep that in mind. I wouldn't necessarily wear it in a hot church. That being said, it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance if you're wanting a heavier floral, fruity floral fragrance. So uh, the top notes are green notes and bergamot, middle notes peach, floral notes sand and coconut, base notes musk, cotton candy, woody notes vanilla and amber. So initially, uh, I'll say prior to experiencing this fragrance, I thought this was going to be my absolute favorite Tiziana Terenzi fragrance. It's got that uh, peach, it's got sand and coconut, it's got cotton candy, vanilla. I mean, it just sounded like a total Catherine fragrance. Upon smelling it, I do love it. I do truly enjoy it and appreciate it. However, I can't smell the coconut in it. I don't really smell sand. I mean, maybe an under, very faint note of it. I do smell peach. I do smell vanilla, the green notes, the and the floral notes, even the cotton candy. I mean, hints of it. And maybe more in the dry down, uh, which, you know, it's the base note, so it probably would be more in the dry down. But all in all, start to finish, I really enjoy Tebby. Some Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, I don't enjoy right off the bat you know, like the first initial impression of them, but the dry down is just gorgeous. And this is one where start to finish, I love it. It does change, it does evolve. So it's definitely one, if you experience it, it's one that you'll wanna sample before you buy so that you make sure that start to finish, this is a great uh, fit for you. But again, that's Tabit by Tiziana Terenzi, a floral woody musk fragrance for both women and men. Personally experiencing it, I'd say that it's more fruity musk than floral musk, so keep that in mind. The last straight day scent that I'm going to discuss is another Tiziana Terenzi, but I tell you, her collections are very diverse, so they're something to experience. I'm just enthralled with her line at the present. The last one is, again, one of my all-time currently uh, Tiziana Terenzi fragrances, and that is Aphrodite. Oh my gosh. <sighs> it's fresh, it's light, it's... I really wanted to include it in my last So Fresh and So Clean video, but I thought it was just a, maybe just a bit too heavy for that video, but it definitely falls in that arena. It's just like, I can't stop smelling it right now. It's beautiful and refreshing. So Aphrodite was inspired by the landscaping around the Mediterranean landscape of, and the high cliffs that stretch out of the sparkling crisp clear blue waters of the sea around the island of Cyprus, which is the birth, the said birthplace of the goddess Aphrodite. The beautiful goddess is said to represent uh, the power of love and seduction and passion capable of uniting and embracing elements of opposing nature, such as man and woman, strength and kindness, passion and sweetness. She is capable of entrancing and enchanting and driving hearts to the most unrestrained and unconfessable, unconfessable, to the most unrestrained and uncon I can't say that word unconfessable feelings. A sweet and really good friend of mine wanted to buy me Terenzi fragrance because he knew of my appreciation for them lately and wanted to help support my channel. So he gave me a choice of which one I wanted and I had such a hard time deciding which to get. And I hadn't yet experienced this one because I couldn't find a sample of it and I didn't want to blind buy it. However, in retrospect, I don't know what I would have chosen. I do love Orza, but oh my gosh, Aphrodite and Cassiopeia too. Just beautiful, beautiful fragrances. If you're unfamiliar with Aphrodite, Aphrodite was the Greek goddess associated with love and seduction, beauty, pleasure, passion, and procreation. Uh, she would be simpatico with like the, the Roman goddess Venus, if you're familiar. So if that gives you an analogy or a story behind the inspiration of this fragrance. Aphrodite is, Aphrodite by Tiziana Terenzi is an amber floral fragrance for women and men. Aphrodite was launched in 2018. The nose behind again, Paolo, Paolo Terenzi. 
Uh, top notes are lilac, white currant, white peach, pink pepper, and vanilla bean. Middle notes, lily of the valley, neroli, tuberose, iris, and geranium. Base notes, white musk, ambergris, ebony, patchouli, and sandalwood. So as I said, the fragrance is just a beautiful, beautiful fragrance. I think it's it would bode well to be a day date or a night date. I included it in the day date only because it is lighter in regards to the other ones I'm going to talk about momentarily. It is considered to be a bit of an aphrodisiac. The beginning opens with that lilac, mixes with the, the vanilla, the peach, the white currant. So you get that fresh, fruity, floral entrance to the fragrance. It then melts those out to those more floral notes and then ends with patchouli, the powerful aphrodisiac, softened with the delicacy of the sandalwood and the white musk. Emphasized with the note of gray amber, which is supposed to be a powerful pheromone of love. So again, another beautiful amber floral for both men and women by Tiziana Terenzi. All right, the next uh, fragrance that we're going to talk about is kind of that interim day, could go day, could go night. It actually has been my go-to fragrance for years. I've spoken about it before, but I definitely wanted to include it in this video because authentically, this is the fragrance that I, up to this point, have donned for most dates prior to COVID. So, you know, prior to my channel starting and all of that. The original was Gucci Guilty, which is the one that I've sported for years, or their new flanker, which I got the rollerball of, which is the one we're gonna speak of, which is the revised Gucci Guilty. It's considered an amber floral fragrance. The Eau de Parfum was launched in 2019. Top notes, pink pepper, mandarin, orange, and bergamot. Middle notes, lilac, violet, geranium, and rose. Base notes, patchouli, and amber. This chapter of Gucci Guilty was opened with the idea that women are liberated. Uh, if you are familiar with the ads that Gucci Guilty had used for Gucci Guilty Pour Femme Eau de Parfum, uh, they used Lana Del Rey and actor Jared Leto in some rather scandalous scenes. The campaign was considered uh, a visitation of iconic Hollywood and quintessential American places. This is one of my all-time favorite fragrances, most commonly worn by Catherine Cole. Uh, I feel like it's a bit heavy lilac when I did my comparison video, which I will link in case you're interested. It is very comparable to the original Gucci Guilty for women. However, I think the lilac note in the new Gucci Guilty Pour Femme is a bit stronger than it was in the original, making it a bit sweeter. I think it kind of round, rounded out the original edges that uh, the original Gucci Guilty had. In all honesty, I do appreciate this one. I will wear this one. I, think I can say that I prefer the original Gucci Guilty to this only because this is just a bit too smooth, a bit too sweet, a bit, a bit too uh, rounded out for me. I liked the, the bit of an edge that the original Gucci Guilty had. It was So all in all, Gucci Guilty Pour Femme Eau de Parfum is a very floral, very sweet fragrance. It's heavy on the lilac. The dry down is definitely a stronger amber scent. Uh, start to finish again, I truly enjoy this edition as well as the original. I think it's essential, it's a seductive, it's an enticing fragrance that I have gotten numerous compliments on. Like, if I were to say one of the most compliment receiving fragrances that I have worn, I can safely say which three it would be. It would be Gucci Guilty, Juicy Couture, the original, and Hypnotic Poison. Those three are the ones that I've gotten the most the most compliments on, hands down. So definitely a good buy if you like those sweet floral scents. And also a great transition as that, uh, obviously most dates I've gone on are nighttime. So if, you know, this is my Gucci Guilty nighttime date scent. So we're transitioning into those nighttime scents. The next fragrance we're gonna discuss, again, for an evening summer date, I think this one could easily be an evening winter date as well. It's uh, very rich in the florals. And this one is called Narcotic Venus by Nasomoto. If you want to see the bottle, it's very, it's, a, as my phone dies, uh, it's a very unique looking bottle. You've got that large white or large wood lid, which seems a bit like a cork, and then the bottle under it. This fragrance is a highly floral, animalic fragrance. Narcotic Venus is a floral fragrance for women. The nose behind the fragrance is Alis Alessandro Gualtieri. The fragrance is considered the result of a quest to capture 
the overwhelming addictive intensity of female sexual power. I think the jasmine is what gives it its uh, seductive nature. I smell strongly the, uh, the jasmine and the tuberose, so if you're partial or sensitive to those fragrances, keep that in mind. But it's a very, it's a smooth, it's a round, it's a floral, seductive and sensual fragrance. Being the richness in the tuberose and the jasmine, it does have a decent silage and a decent longevity. It has a strong body and lasts a decent amount of time. This next one is another one of my most favorite finds as of late, and it is Sol or Soleil by Morat. It is an amber floral fragrance for women and men. Sol or Soleil, uh, meaning sun, which I know, I just don't know, okay, anyway. Launched in 2017, the nose behind the fragrance is Andrea Tiero Casati. The top notes are peach, black currant, lemon, apple, and pink pepper. Middle notes, coconut, tuberose, and ylang ylang. Base notes, amber, musk, and patchouli. So they was the fourth addition to the gold collection. If I can remember their collections, they have the gold, the black and white, and then art collection. The bottles of any of Moresque's fragrances are gorgeous and if you like to keep, if you like to display your bottles, this is definitely one that will look very attractive on your display. So this is the bottle for Soleil. Gorgeous, gorgeous bottle in my opinion. So as I said, it's the fourth edition to the gold collection, um, a radiant and vibrant fragrance in paying tribute to the sun's rays. The description equates the inspiration to the millions of arrows of light that the sun distributes and with its rays caress every, caress every flower, fruit, and our skin, which I think is just a beautiful, beautiful imagery. Soleil's bouquet is full of uh, notes that celebrate uh, summertime, the earth's heat, the harmonious flowers, the desire for a renewed spirit, and a refreshing energy that stays with us all year round. I love this fragrance. Initially, the first impression that you get upon spraying this perfume is this beautiful peach scent. It's not synthetic, it's very fresh, like a true bite into a ripe peach. It's of all the peach notes that I have experienced, this one was one of the most true pure peach and I just fell in love with it. And I really, in all honesty, wish that that note stayed throughout the duration of the fragrance. In the dry down, it begins uh, very reminiscent of Ellie Saab to me. And I actually own that fragrance and it's a beautiful, beautiful fragrance, but it does smell to me so close to Ellie Saab that I couldn't bring myself to actually purchase the bottle knowing that the dry down is going to smell very similar to one that I already own, which was so disappointing to me because I did just enjoy that opening peach note so much. The top notes to Soleil are the apple, black currant, peach, lemon, pink pepper, the heart, coconut, ylang ylang, tuberose, the base, musk, patchouli, and amber. I should actually look at Ellie Saab's notes and see how they do compare. But regardless, this is a beautiful, beautiful fragrance for your summer dates. And again, it's unisex, so men can wear it too, depending on your fragrance preference. And I saved my two favorites for last. These are the two that aren't just your nighttime dates. These are the dates where you want to enrapture your date. You want to just leave them spellbound. You want to leave a scent trail that they will remember. These are also two of the fragrances that have leave me, left me the most impressed lately. The first two of these enrapturing fragrances that we will discuss is actually created uh, as a collaboration between a fragrance house and another perfume reviewer and that is Minuit et Demi Fragrance du Bois. Demi Rawling is another fragrance reviewer and she uh, collaborated with Fragrance du Bois to create uh, the perfect fragrance in her mind and that is Minuit et Demi Fragrance du Bois. It's considered an amber spicy fragrance for both women and men. Launched in 2020, the nose behind the fragrance is Stéphane Bignana. The top notes cardamom, pimento, and bergamot. Middle notes caramel and coffee. Base notes Madagascar vanilla, vanilla, cinnamon, musk, tobacco, cedar, liqueur, cashmere, and vetiver. I will quote. You must to quote. Uh, the description, it is the scent of utter pleasure. 
Minui et Demi will compel all of your senses, an intimate and sensual fragrance created to intoxicate the room. The ultimate scent of pleasure for women and men created to share. When I first sprayed this fragrance, I didn't think that I was going to enjoy it as much as I did, but the dry down is just, it's spellbounding. It's, uh, smooth and rich and enticing. It kind of lulls you in with, with that caramelized coffee, vanilla, and then the dry down of that musk mixed with the tobacco and the bourbon. It just, it's a sensorial experience start to finish. I heard that it's comparable to Penhaligon's Changing Constance. However, when I experienced Changing Constance, it seemed more of a muted down version of this one. So again, this is an intoxicating fragrance for both men and women. Minui et Demi Fragrance de Bois. And last but certainly not least, Addictive Vibration by Initio Parfums Privé. Addictive Vibration is considered a floral fragrance for both women and men. It was launched in 2016, created by Pierre Constantine Gueros and Maurice Roussel. The notes in Addictive Vibration include honey, apple blossom, orange blossom, vanilla orchid, and musk. Again, start to finish, this is a truly enjoyable fragrance. I have been wearing this one a lot lately. It's a bit heavy, so if you're gonna be outside, it's not necessarily an outdoor fragrance, but it's just so seductive. I had to definitely include it in this video. It's rich, it's enveloping, it's one of those you just kind of are uh, hypnotized by. It's it's one that you smell and you just want to get closer and smell it more and more. I think it starts off heavy on the honey, which I found an intriguing note. Uh, it's not like a straight out syrupy honey, but like a true pure honey with that, where it has that slight, not bitterness, but um, edge to the sweetness. And then the musk is introduced and kind of swirls with the honey and the floral notes to create this magnificently charming blend. To make it a bit more on the masculine side, I have been experimenting and pairing it with another of Anicio Parfum Privé's fragrance, which I think was absolute aphrodisiac, but I can't remember for sure. So I'm gonna leave it in the comments which one that I pair it with. It's uh, a more woodsy, spicy fragrance that just kind of mellows it out and is a really interesting blend. So definitely, if you're interested in that, check in my comment section. I promise to leave it in there to be accurate. I don't want to misinform or mislead you guys. Also, the longevity, the silage of this fragrance is so impressive. It's Again, be wary, it is a stronger fragrance, so keep that in mind when you spray it, but it's. I don't think anyone will be complaining. We'll just say that. So uh, I will also say, if you want to bring out more of the honey scent, I've been using, uh, and again, I don't know how to pronounce it, it's Jizu, but G-I-S-O-U hair products with it, with that rich honey uh, fragrance in them, and then it, it just is such a beautiful blend with the addictive vibration. It's good hair products too. For someone with fine, thinner hair, it's, it's very nourishing without being too heavy. So side note on that, random thoughts by Catherine. Anyway, uh, so there you have it. My 10, top 10, my current July 2021 seductive day and night date fragrances. To be honest, I can't wait to wear these last two on a date and see the response. I have, but right now there's... <sighs> I gotta find that special someone to go out on the date with. Anyway, uh, currently no one's reaching that bar to... Uh, earn wear of these fragrances. Please, please, please comment below if you've tried any of these, if you have any that I need to check out because I am fine adding to my arsenal of seductive intoxicating fragrances, which is exactly what all of these are. All 10 of these, I don't think that you'd be steered wrong. Um, if you experience any of these and wear them on a date, please let me know the response. I would be extremely interested to hear. Let's get that conversation started. Sounds like a juicy one. And uh, again, my name's Catherine. Please make sure to hit the subscribe button so you can stay up to date with my posted videos. Make sure to hit the notification bell so you can be alerted as soon as it comes out. Please do me the honor of giving me that thumbs up because it really helps me out in the YouTube algorithm of getting my videos out there to a wider audience. Uh, let's try to grow our community here. And I love, I absolutely love when you guys comment below and leave me your thoughts. It's, I honestly get way too excited about it. It's, it's like, a, it's just so exciting to me to be talking to you guys about something I'm passionate about. So I can't wait to hear you guys' thoughts. And until then, uh, I appreciate you all and I will see you soon.
Thanks. Bye-bye.